Hey, welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at an open source digital signage software called Zybo. So in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to set up digital signage using that on hardware you can get from Walmart. And so in this video, I wanted to show you some of the software that we could load on it. So there's a couple of different ways you can use Zybo. You can either pay them to host it for you, and it's typically a per device per month fee, but they also have an open source self-hosted version. Now you will have to provide your own server. If you need help setting up your own server, I did make a previous video where I kind of walked you through those steps. And one thing you will also have to keep in mind is that if you're planning to use an Android device, they do charge you a license for the device, except it's just a one-time fee. It's about $30 and that license does not expire. So this video, I'm going to show you the software a little bit, how it kind of works. And then I'm going to walk you through setting it up on your own server. Some of the things you will have to have for this project is a Linux server running Docker. We'll also be using Portainer to manage it and Nginx Proxy Manager. Let's go ahead and jump in so I can show you Zybo. So when you first jump into the software, you will be presented with this dashboard. I definitely encourage you to take a look at their documentation since I'm just going to be showing you like a really high level overview of the software. For now, let's skip over campaigns and go straight to layouts. Think of layouts as the individual slides that you'll be presenting on your digital signage. It does come with a default here, but I'm going to create a new one it's going to be a very basic one. So I'm going to hit add new layout at the top. We do have a bunch of widgets that we can select from here, as well as different shapes, pictures, audio, video, and another media, as well as layouts. Let's just create a really basic slide that has the time. So we're going to click on our clock and we're going to put just a, like a big old flip clock on here. We can resize them. And there are ways that customize different settings of this. Now that we've created a little basic clock, let's just add an image in here and we're just gonna use the Zybo logo. Now let's click on the green checkbox and we'll save this. It'll ask us for a name, I'm just gonna give it name of clock and I'm going to save it. I'm going to exit out of this design program and I'm going to change my clock from a draft to published. This will just make it so that we can use it with our digital signage. I'm going to backpedal a little bit and show you campaigns. This is where you tell Zybo which slides that you want to run in your digital signage and you can have a whole bunch of different campaigns that spread out across multiple devices. It's a very, very detailed program. Let's jump into our campaign and make sure that our clock is there. So this one's just picking up whatever we add and we can see that our clock is already set up. So I'm going to save this guy. Now going down the list, if you have a slide that you use pretty frequently or a certain layout that you like, you can create templates so that they're much easier to reuse over and again. Now we have resolutions for our different digital signage. Some of your TVs might be 1080p, some 4K, others 720, and you can create different slides that will make sure that all your content's going to fit into that certain resolution. Playlists are just another way that you can organize your slides and really group them together. Going down, we also have media. So if you have custom images or videos that you want to add in, this would be a great place to do that. Data sets apply to different information you can pull with like an API. And then lastly, you have menu boards. This is where you can create menus. Uh, a lot of people use Cybo for uh, showing like menus of food on top. You know, if you've ever been to like McDonald's or something, you've probably seen like a menu uh, shown on those screens. Later on in this video, I'll show you how to add displays to this and manage them. Uh, they all have their own different settings you can customize as well. Display groups are just another way for you to group your display. So if you have one, if you have a group of displays that are like all in the same physical location, it's a great way to organize those. So they're all playing the same digital signage. So display settings is where you specify the defaults for all of your displays. 
You can also add custom profiles. So if there's settings that apply to a certain group of displays or a certain display, this is where you can add that and have different settings for different displays or different groups of displays. The last couple of settings here really apply to your server. You know, who has access to, to be able to uh, work in Zybo, as well as user groups, settings for the entire platform, different applications that you can enable. Some of the really cool ones I found was like Pixabay, as well as Open Weather Map. Those require APIs, but you can quickly configure them and enable them by just supplying an API from, uh, from Pixabay or Open Weather Map or any of the other ones you have here. So next up is modules, and these are just additional elements for you to use in your layout. Now some of these are disabled because they might need an additional API, or they just might not have been enabled because they're not very popular. But if you want to enable any of these, simply go under the little dash here and go to configure, just check enabled, and hit save. The rest of these options are pretty straightforward. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. You have transitions, you can you know, enable or disable certain transitions. Uh, you got tasks here, you know, like automated tasks that will run. Uh, probably don't need to mess with those too much, but you can add additional if you want to. Uh, next up, we have our tags. That's for more organization. Your folders, which you can set up here, but you can also set them up under the different menus. Just another way for you to organize your different displays, media, as well as your layouts. Lastly, before we look at the reporting is fonts. If you do have like a custom font you like to use, you can really just upload it here. It's very easy. And that way when you're creating your layouts, you can use your custom fonts. Lastly is reports. I'm not gonna touch on these too much, but definitely jump in here and take a look at them. It's a great thing if you need to provide you know, bandwidth statistics, library usage, you know, proof that a certain slide was played, especially if you're doing advertisements between your slides. So now let's jump into setting this up on our own server. We're not going to be using Portainer for this. However, we can still manage it. It's just a lot easier to set this up with the command prompt, which I'm going to show you right now. Now that we're on the Zybo page, let's click on open source and let's scroll down and find the Docker. So if you get stuck or anything, check out the main page. You can click on open source and scroll down. We're going to be using Docker and the installation guide is here. However, since we're going to be using Nginx Proxy Manager as well, I'm not going to follow this installation guide. Instead, I'm going to use their GitHub. We can find that pretty easily by just typing in, by typing in Zybo GitHub Docker. It's one of the first things that will show up here. Click on this. And I'm going to clone this GitHub onto my server. And I'm going to make some changes to the environmental file which is right here, this uh, config.env.template. Once we get SSH into our server, let's clone this GitHub repo. So I see that we've downloaded our GitHub. Let's cd into that folder. And I'm just gonna do an ls to look at the files, make sure we have everything we need, and we do. One thing that we'll have to do is we'll have to copy this template file right here over to config.env and that will fill in all of our environmental variables, uh, but we will make some changes. So let's cp copy config.env.template. We're going to copy that to config.env. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for us so you can see it. I'm going to do a nano config.env and once we're in here we do have to change a couple of these settings we will have to specify a mysql password i'm just going to make up a password i'm going to call it snack time 9000 exclamation point i would definitely encourage yours to be a lot more secure if we scroll down uh, there's a couple of settings for smtp servers I'm not going to touch any of that. I don't think that this server is going to be sending out too much email. I'm going to change my CMS server name. I'm going to change my CMS server name. That's going to match what I want it to be under my Sinhao domain. 
I'm just going to call it zybo.sendhow.com. And we haven't set that up yet. I'll show you how to set that up under Namecheap in a little bit. And that's pretty much all we have to really change. I'm going to exit it and save it. I'm going to hold down the control key and hit X. I'm going to hit Y to save. And then I'm going to hit enter. We do need to edit one more file before we deploy. Let's do nanner docker dash compose dot yaml. And while most of the things that we need to change are done in that config dot env file, since we are going to be using nginx proxy manager, we're going to have to make sure that this guy is not going to try to open up his own web port. So if you look under the CMS web right here, you'll see that the ports it's going to try to use are 80 and 80. Uh, that's not going to fly with nginx proxy manager because they're going to get a conflict if you leave that open. Let's simply just remove these two lines. And I'm going to hit control X again and then save and then enter. So now that we've edited those two files, it's time to deploy our Docker containers. I'm going to do a sudo docker dash compose space up then dash D. Now I'm going to wait while it pulls down all the image files and sets up our containers for us. We'll be back here in just a little bit. Okay, now that we're all done, let's make sure our Docker containers are running. I'm going to do a sudo docker space ps. And I'm going to increase my window a little bit here. So it looks like all my containers are running. If I, if you are running Portainer, you can also see the same information here. Now our next step is to make sure that we have our subdomain set up with Namecheap and then set up our Nginx proxy manager. So if you're on Namecheap or whatever you're using for your DNS server, let's make sure that we have an A record going from zybo.sinhow.com on over to the IP address of our server. I'm going to add a new record, a record. I'm going to call it Zybo. It's my IP address. This is my IP address of my server, my external IP address. And I'm going to save all changes. All right, so that part is all finished. Now let's jump over to Nginx Proxy Manager so that we know that it'll handle all of our traffic and get it to where it's supposed to go. Let's click on Proxy Hosts and add new proxy host here. And the domain name is going to be, for me, zybo.senhow.com, my subdomain. And now it needs to know where to, to direct the traffic. And so this is where I'm going to use Portainer to find the name of my container, but you can also use it through the command prompt if you want. Uh, the one that I am going to be looking for is this web right here. The zybo docker underscore cms dash web underscore one. If I copy that and I paste it under here, I know that it wanted to port, go to port 80 because that's the port that I saw in the Docker Compose. I'm going to do my usual blocking common exploits and enabling WebSocket support. Let's save this. All right, that's all set up. I do want to make sure that this traffic is encrypted. So I'm going to go to edit my Zybo. I'm going to go to SSL and I'm going to request a new certificate. I'm going to agree to the terms of service and hit save. All right, now our very last step before we head on over to our new website is to make sure that Nginx Proxy Manager is joined to the same Docker network. So for this, I'm going to be using Portainer. I'm going to jump in to this Nginx app here. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. All right, so I see it's not joined to my Zybo network. So if I drop this down, I'm going to select the Zybo Docker underscore default and join this network. Now that that's all done, let's head on over to our website. I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to go to zybo.sendhow.com. And if everything went okay, you should be presented with a username and password prompt. The default is zybo underscore admin. The password is just password. All right, we're now in our new Zybo server. 
The last thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to set up a display. So the quickest way to do that is to head over to the Zybo website, then go under resources and downloads. So in this case, I'm going to be using the Windows client since I'm not quite ready to pay for the Android license. So if I download this file, now that we have the client downloaded, I'm going to run it on my virtual machine. And we'll do a next, next, I accept and next and install. And let's hit finish and launch our player. So the first thing that we need to do is to put in our host name. Uh, this one is just a uh, default. So I'm gonna put in zybo.sinhow.com. And now we need our CMS key. Let me show you how to get that. Going back to our Zybo server, let's scroll down. You see where it says settings under administration here. Let's click on that. And here is our CMS secret key. Let's copy this and let's paste it into our key here. And then we'll hit connect. And if you see display is now registered and awaiting authorization from administrator, then you've done a great job and we're ready to move on to our next step which is to go back to our server, go under displays, and you'll see that we have a display waiting to be authorized. So let's drop this down and click on authorize and hit yes. So if you've done everything right, your display should be green and you should be ready to go. And now you can assign this display to different schedules, different playlists and different campaigns. Now, obviously I can't cover everything about Zybo in just one video. There's so much to this platform. I definitely encourage you to take a look at the user documentation here to get you familiar with it. But once you have your display in there, you've kind of done the groundwork and now you can start to experiment. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if not, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks for watching.